Why is it that atoms react with each other in such a variety of ways? Two helium atoms, for example, will not combine with each other at all. Or with atoms of other elements, such as hydrogen. But hydrogen atoms combine readily with each other to form diatomic molecules. Hydrogen also combines with other elements, such as oxygen, to form the compound water. These different ways of bonding are a puzzle, but one we can explain with our knowledge of the structure of the atom. We can visualize the hydrogen atom as consisting of a tiny nucleus which carries a single positive charge and a single electron somewhere in a vast space about the nucleus. Let's have another look at the reaction between two hydrogen atoms. But this time, let's freeze the action. If somehow we could see the nuclei and electrons, at a particular instant we might see something like this. We know that the nucleus and electron of each atom exert attractive forces on each other. But there are also interactions between the two atoms. The two nuclei repel each other, as do the two electrons. To make things even more complicated, there are forces of attraction between the nucleus of one atom and the electron of the other atom. It all adds up to quite an array of repulsion forces and attraction forces. The size of each of these forces is affected by the distance between the charges. When two atoms come very close together, the repulsive forces are greater than the attractive forces. When they are somewhat further apart, the attractive forces are greater. For hydrogen, the attractive and repulsive forces balance each other when the atoms are fairly close together. At this distance, where attraction equals repulsion, the atoms are so close together, we consider them to be sharing electrons in overlapping orbitals. If we could see the electrons at various moments, we might see this. Or this. Or this. On the average, each electron is being influenced, not only by its own nucleus, but also by the other nucleus. A covalent bond is the name given to bonds like this, in which atoms share electrons. Why then do two helium atoms not form a similar bond? Let's watch them interact again and freeze the action. If we could photograph the atoms at a particular instant, we might see something like this. Helium has a positive charge of plus two on its nucleus. And each helium nucleus has two electrons associated with it, both being in the same energy level. The nucleus exerts an attractive force on each of its electrons and is attracted to each electron in turn. The electrons within the atom repel each other. Again, there are forces of interaction between the atoms. The two nuclei repel each other, as do the electrons. The electrons of one atom are attracted by the nucleus of the other, and vice versa. The size of each of the forces is determined by the size of the charges and by the distance between them. For helium, the forces of repulsion turn out to be greater than the forces of attraction until the atoms are quite far apart. At this point, where attraction balances repulsion, the atoms are so far apart that their orbitals do not overlap, and so no bond forms. Other elements like helium, which do not bond readily with other atoms, are found directly beneath helium in the periodic table. 
Another way in which atoms bond together can be explained by examining their electron arrangement. Sodium has a nuclear charge of 11 plus. And its 11 electrons are arranged so that there are two in the 1s orbital, two in the 2s orbital, two in each of the 2p orbitals, and finally, one in the 3s orbital, which is the key to sodium's bonding behavior. This electron is held quite loosely by the sodium nucleus for two reasons. In an average instant of time, it is quite far from the nucleus, and so the force of attraction is weak. Also, there are a number of other electrons between this third energy level electron and the nucleus. These repel it, and therefore diminish the effect of attraction by the nucleus. Let's simplify the way we represent the sodium atom and its single loosely held electron in the 3s orbital. Sodium sits at the beginning of one period in the periodic table. As we move across the table, we add protons and, of course, matching electrons. As we gradually fill the third energy level with electrons, the volume of the atom keeps shrinking because the increasing number of protons means an increasing nuclear charge, which exerts a greater and greater attractive force on the electrons. So the seven outer electrons in the chlorine atom are tightly held by the greater number of protons in the nucleus in comparison to the larger sodium atom with fewer protons, exerting less attraction on a single loosely held electron. What happens if a sodium atom comes near a chlorine atom? The strong attraction of the chlorine begins to exert itself on the loosely held electron of sodium until the weaker attraction of the sodium nucleus for its own electron is overcome. This action results in a transfer of an electron forming chlorine into a negative ion because of the added negative charge of the captured electron. The sodium has lost a negative charge and the size of an entire orbital. It becomes a positive ion. These two opposite charges produce a strong force of attraction between the ions. In a reaction such as this, where an electron is transferred from one atom to another, ionic bond is the name given to the bond which forms. It turns out that whenever two atoms form a chemical bond, they either share electrons by overlapping orbitals in a covalent bond, or trade electrons to form an ionic bond. Or something somewhere in between. <laughs>